So in this example on 64, A equals 16, B equals 17, the first thing we've got to do is create a triangle. And again, I'm OK with however you guys are going to be creating your triangle. It, it just needs to make sure it's an oblique triangle. Doesn't really matter where A, B, and C are. But we just want to label our triangle 64 degrees, B equals 17, A equals 16. Automatically, I see that I can create a ratio and I can solve for my angle B. Does everybody follow me with least step and first step? Right? So therefore, I go ahead and solve, I create a ratio. So I'd say 16 over the sine of 64 degrees equals uh, 17, oops, I'm sorry, yep, yeah, equals 17 over the sine of B. So I agree with me. Ah, I don't want to write it like, but do you guys see for writing it this way, then I have to solve for B in the denominator. I really don't want to do that. I would much rather rewrite them, flip it. So I'm going to rewrite this as sine of 64 over 16 equals sine of B over 17. You guys follow me on that? It's much easier to solve for it this way because now to solve for B, I just need to multiply by 17 on both sides. And I have sine of B is equal to 17 times the sine of 64 over 16. So now I'm going to type that into my calculator. So I'll do 17 times the sine of 64, end my parenthesis, and then divide that by 16. But that's what sine of B is equal to. I don't want sine of B. I need to figure out what B is. So I use sine inverse of that whole value. Now, fortunately, it's all kept in my calculator, right? So all I'm going to do is hit second sine, which will give me sine inverse. And then I just hit second answer. And that gives me the answer. And if you need any help with these, um, feel free to let me know. Therefore, now B is approximately 72.740. Now, that's what B equals. But if I'm going to use B in any more of my calculations, I want to store this. So I'm going to store it as alpha B. That's important because I need to see, figure out what C is. And to figure out C, I am going to do C is going to equal, C is going to equal um, 180 minus 64 minus B. So instead of, re instead of typing my rounded answer, I want to type the full exact answer. That's why I store B all together. So I do 180 minus 64 minus alpha B. And that gives me C which is approximately 43.26 as it gets rounded. OK, now I have enough information to solve for my C. Again, you want to go back and use your original ratio. I'm sorry, where, where's our original ratio that we were given? And we want to solve for side length C. But now since we're solving for the side length C, I would like C to be in the numerator. So I'll have C over the sine. And again, I don't want to use my rounded C. I want to use, oops, and so I should store this. So my storing, once I get that, I want to store that as C. So I'm going to hit store alpha C. So now, not this, but the whole answer is stored. Yes? So C in my calculator looks like this. 25990334. That is what I store to see. However, when I'm writing down my answer, I'm only asking you to, to round it to the nearest thousandth, right? So therefore, Christian, you would just give me the rounded answer. However, if we're going to use C in our calculations, which we are, I want to make sure I'm using the full value of C. So if you don't know how to store it, then just write down the whole number. Does that make sense? Just write down the whole number. Just don't use rounded answers in calculations. Give your answer rounded at the end. Just don't use rounded answers in calculations. So C over sine of C equals 16 over sine of 64. 
So therefore, c is equal to 16 times the sine of c all over 64. So now I just type in 16 times the sine of c. So I do alpha c, close my parentheses, and then divide that by 64. Uh-oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, that's sine of 64. Oops. So 16 times the sine of alpha c divided by the sine of 64. Sorry. Yes. You could have, but the problem is, yeah, you could have, but I, what if you made a mistake on angle B? I would just say it's usually easier to, if you made a problem with angle B, then yeah, you probably made angle C, but um, we don't want to use any rounded answers. Since these answers were given to you, I would recommend using the answers that are always given to you, okay? But yes, you could have done that. Now, we solve for that, right? And that all looks good. However, we noticed that this was a side-side angle originally, right? So we have a possibility of case 2. So when I solve for B, I need to check, is there another angle? It Could there be two Bs? Because remember, when I was explaining, looking at sine, when you guys take the inverse of sine, there's two angles where sine is equal to 1 half. Would you guys agree with me? There's two angles when sine is equal to 1 half. Your calculator only gives you one answer because your calculator is using your restriction, right? However, your calculator used that restriction. If you guys remember, we inverted sine and we said the domain was restricted. Um, so we had our restrictions on the inverse. But technically, there's two, there's two solutions between 0 and 2 pi or between 0 and 360. And to find those two angles, let's say that's 30 degrees, which it is. This angle is 150 degrees, or 180 minus 30. So to check our second case, all you guys need to do is do 180 degrees. So if there is a second case, we'll call this B2, is simply going to be 180 degrees minus B. So what I'll do is I'll do 180 minus alpha B. And what I get is 107.2599033. That is a possibility of a second angle for B. It's a possible second angle. Now, if you guys look at this, is it possible for B, is it possible for B to also be 107? Well, if A is 64, could I add 64 and B and then still have enough room for another angle C? Yeah, there's more room, right? So there is two cases. There's two possible triangles we could have. So now what we have to do is we have to store this as our new B. Now, I don't have room for a B2, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this as D. Okay, so B2 is now my new D. And then I basically just kind of go through the exact same steps. I have, I'm given my A over A. So I have, um, and we're given sine of, actually all we need to do is, we already, if we're given that B and we're given 17, I can figure out, um, let's see, we're given those two, given those two. All I need to do is figure out now what C is. So C2 is going to be 180 minus D minus 64 degrees, right? Because that's my new B2. So I'm going to store this as alpha D. And again, guys, you don't need to store this. If you just want to write down the whole problem or write down the whole answer, just write down the whole answer. I'm just using calculator functions of storing, OK? So dang it. So 
So I do 180 minus alpha D minus 64, and I get 8.7. And I'm going to call that E. Okay. And so I'll store that as alpha E, which in reality, that is my second angle for C. Okay. Um, then what I have here is um, now I just need to figure out what my new C2 is. So I need to go ahead and create a, um, another ratio, which would be 16 over the sine of 64 is equal to C over the sine of E. Now, one thing I forgot to mention to you guys, when you guys are doing a case too, do you guys see how I filled in the answers here? Do you guys see how I filled in the answers here? What I would recommend doing is filling in the answers into another triangle. So let's call this case number two. We know A, C, and B. So let's call this, that's 64, that was 16, this is 17. My new B, which is 107.256. Then my new C ended up being 8.74. Because you guys, yes? Yeah, oh, oh yeah, 0.26. Yeah, thank you. Right? And then A is equal to 16 and B is equal to 70. Because do you guys see, I can already see it by some of the people that have already tried to started to give up and not even playing because they know that this problem is going to be on a quiz, that this gets confusing with a lot of numbers out there, right? So what I'd automatically do is start filling in a second triangle and saying, hey, here's my case two triangle. The A, B, A, A, and B are still the same. But now I have my new B, which is 180 minus my old B. Then my new C is 180 minus my new B minus my A, gives me my new C. And now I just need to figure this out to find C. So my last answer is going to be sine of E times 16 over the sine of 64. And again, when you guys store things, I think it just makes life easier. However, Angelica, you can write out the whole answer. And that's not a problem at all, OK? But just do not use the rounded answer. I cannot stress that enough. I know it's going to happen. People are going to get the right answer, but they're going to use rounded answer, so they're going to be off. So I do sine alpha e times 16 divided by the sine of 64. And I get c is equal to 2.705. And there you go. OK. So it's, a, it's obviously.